Hi guys and welcome back to the channel, or welcome to the channel if it's your first time of being here. I am The Smiler, an achievement well, hunter that streams all of my progress over on Twitch. Today's game was picked by a viewer in Twitch from the list of games that we've clicked from suggestions so far. If you want to suggest a game, you can leave a comment on this video or in the Twitch chat when I am live streaming. The game that we're going to be playing today is Ukulele, and in this video we're going to be completing both games in the series. According to the guides, the second game is a lot harder than the first game. That's due to the impossible there, which we'll get onto later. But overall, they're quite an easy completion. The first being a 3 out of 10 and the second being a 6 out of 10 difficulty with a combined total of about 50 hours to complete both. Although they are different styles to each other, both are really fun and chill completions except for a few hidden quills in the first game. But more on that later. No way. Ukulele was one of those games that I remember being released and thinking it looked pretty cool and I'd like to give it a go in completing, but I just never got around to picking it up. This is why I love the way that we're picking the game that we're playing to complete. It's suggested by my viewers and it lets me go back and play games that I've once seen but never actually picked up and played. Or it could be a game that I've never heard of before and it introduced me into a different genre of game completely. This game shares a resemblance with Banjo Kazooie and was the first game that I'd ever completed 100% and this led to my addiction and wanting to complete every single game that we play, collecting everything and getting all the achievements. Anyway, back to Ukulele. This game is a 3D platforming game in which we control the title characters Yuka and Lele in order to save the world from an evil corporation, Ivory Towers which is run by the evil capital B, the main villain in this game, and his sidekick Dr. Quack. After learning about the one book, which is a powerful <laughs> book that can rewrite the universe, capital B tries to steal this, but luckily the pages of the book, known as pages, not jiggies, escape and are hidden throughout high towers, and we need to collect them to restore the one book to all its glory. With help of a few characters along the way, such as Trouser, who teaches us skills, Dr. Puzzle scientists that shapeshifts us in levels to collect more pages. So how do we go about getting the story complete and unlocking all of those achievements? Well, we broke it down into four steps. Step one, play through all the levels and collect all the skills. Step two, now that we've got all the skills, replay the levels and complete them 100%. Step three, finding everything else that's hidden in the overworld before taking on the final boss, which is step four, defeating capital B and completing the game. Step one, play through the five levels, unlock all the skills. The main objective to begin with when playing a level for the first time is to find as many quills as we can to buy all the skills needed from Trouser. Some of the skills are found in later levels so we will need to backtrack once we have learnt these in order to collect everything hidden in each level. Once you bought your first skill from Trouser, you'll get this. We Another achievement. We also explore the levels collecting as many pages as we can in order to expand the tomes. Collecting your first page you unlocks this achievement. Oh achievement! Unlocked. Each level needs to be fully expanded before you can explore everything in the level. Yeah. Expanding a tome for the first time unlocks this achievement. Size matters. Achievement unlocked. We could have completed this game a lot quicker if we'd have just figured out that the best thing to do when jumping into a level for the first time is only collect enough quills to buy all the skills from Trouser. Once you've done this, move on to level 2. Once you've done it in level 2, move on to level 3 and so on. So you will unlock in every single one of the skills as fast as possible. We didn't do this and we went through each level finding as many things as we possibly could do and taking a lot of time to find the pages that were available to us without the skills that we needed to collect everything else. It took us until the fifth level to figure out that all we needed to do was this. Is we'll go and find the snake guy in this level. We'll get every single skill that we need to get. And then we'll go back to level one. Along with the quills, there are many more collectibles we need to locate and help to completion of this game. There's an arcade machine token, which grants you access to play Retro's Arcade. These are mini arcade games where you can get two pages, one for completing the mini game and one for playing the mini game, but beating Retro's high score. They're pretty easy for not too much of an issue collecting them. Once you've found the first coin and beaten the first mini game, you get an achievement. Achievement when I'm 64. You can also get another achievement for beating Retro's high score for the first time. What's a leaderboard? Achievement unlocked. We also need to find the molecule item which is given to Dr. Puzz to transform us in each level so we can help get more pages. Once we transform first we get this. Squids in! Achievement unlocked. We need to find five of these ghosts which are called ghost writers in each level. Once we found one we also get this achievement. Achievement unlocked. Box spook. In each level there's also a hidden collectible that isn't shown in the pause menu to show you that you need to collect it. And these are one of these skulls called pirate skulls. Finding the first one unlocks this achievement. Achievement unlocked. Private pillage. There are also power-ups in this game called tonics which we can equip to give us a bit more of a power-up. To unlock all these you have a special method to unlock such as collecting 5 pages, collecting 300 quills and so on. Upon unlocking and equipping our first one we unlock this achievement. Three bottoms up. Each tome also has a world boss that once defeated gives you an achievement. The very slow achievement unlocks as well. In each level, we can also find this character, Kratos, who has to collect enough diamonds on an on the rail section. When we control the minecart, jump forward and backwards, dodging all the obstacles as we go. Beating this gives us a 
Kartos returns. These do get pretty difficult in the later levels as well and can take a bit of time to complete. Nowhere near. Now that we've done the first level and got the skills from that, we're moving on to the second awesome. level. And in between some of them, you get stopped by Dr. Quack, who lets us progress only if we can beat a quiz about what? the game progress so far. Those Ghastly Ghost Riders, which do you capture first in Tribal Stack Tropics? Which did you capture first in? Once we've beaten it, we unlock this achievement. Achievement unlocks whackers. And then we can move on to the second level and keep progressing through, unlocking all the skills. Finally, after we've unlocked all five of the levels and found Trouser in all five of the levels and bought all of the skills, we unlock this achievement. Oh, achievement unlocks smashing. And with that, that's step one complete. So we'll now move on to step two. Step two, after purchasing all the skills and collecting enough pages, now have the ability to finish the level and get 100% per level. What we need to find in each level is 200 quills, 25 pages, the molecule item so we can transform in every level, beat the bosses, collect all five of the ghost writers, find both the health and power extenders, and finally the pirate skull in each level. Once we start doing this for each level, we will start to unlock a little bit more of the achievements. Some of the achievements that we get for collecting the pages are one for collecting 30, one for collecting 75. Achievement unlocked. The, the achievements we'll get for expanding the tones, we'll get one for expanding three of the levels oh, and all five. Million. Oh, achievement unlocked. Supersized. Once we found 200 quills, we'll get this achievement. Achievement unlocked. License to quill. We'll get another for 500. Achievement unlocked. Fits the quill. We'll get an achievement for collecting three pirate items and also all five. Achievement unlocked. Secret salvage. And then we'll get an achievement for collecting every single one of the ghost riders. Achievement unlocked. Grabbed the ghouls. The hard part about completing each level 100% is that some of the collectibles can be hidden a little bit too well. For example, on the first level, we spent a good hour flying around the map, checking every nook and cranny and trying to find one more quill. Just one. It wasn't until chat had told me where it was and it's safe to say that I wasn't best pleased when I found it. No way. No way. I thought it was a little bit ridiculous where it was hidden, as you was never going to look there without your guide or help. But we move, we grew, and I think we're a better person for not throwing my controller out the window at this point. <laughs> all in all, the rest of the collectibles were easy enough to find. You won't need to use a guide for the majority of them, and luckily we found everything in the level. But once we've got everything found in every single level, I mean, that's step two it. complete, I can move on to step three. So step three, there's a little bit more that we need to collect in the overworld to complete everything before we're taking on the final boss. We need to find ten more quills to get this achievement. <laughs> achievement unlocked, had one's quill, getting all of the quills. Find the health extender for this. Achievement unlocked, raising the bar. You face the statue, which is a buddy slam, and once you've done that, you'll unlock this. Wee, achievement unlock! Petty vandalism. We also had to come back to the statue later on as we missed the power extender. So we just ignored it last time. But that's achievement unlocked, bar star. Yeah. And then find the rest of the pages which are hidden in the overworld. What else do we have to do? How would you get in there? That looks important. After searching for a while, we had to consult the guide to find the last page here, but it was in a location we had noticed before, but never checked. From someone else's book, achievement unlocked for getting every single page here. Yes, we did use a guide because we looked at this and we said, that looks important. I just completely blanked it. Anyway, now that we've found all of the collectibles in the overworld and all five of the levels, we're on to the final step, which is Oops. step four to defeat the final boss capital B. And before we can take on capital B, we have another quiz from Dr. Quack that we need to complete before we get up to the arena. It's boss fighting time. In the arena, the boss is waiting for us and has four phases to the fight. The 
first phase, capital B throws a swarm of bees at us, and we need to dodge, and once we've dodged all the bees and they've gone, he'll start to complain, we can attack him here, which knocks him over, and we can attack him repeatedly, until he's taken enough damage to move on to the second phase. Before the start of the second phase, capital B will ask Dr. Quack to send us some crates for him to use against us, and not to mix them up with the ammo crates, but Dr. Quack mixes this up and sends up ammo crates. This stage begins, we have to dodge the bombs thrown and capital B's minions, while breaking the crates sent up by Dr. Quack to get the ammo crates, and we can start jumping and fire to hit capital B until it lands on the ground ready for phase 3. The third phase begins with capital B asking Dr. Quack to press the wall and roof lasers, but presses the wrong button and opens up the roof and drops the walls, making the floor smaller and having acid right around, which, which damages us if we land in it. Capital B now slams into the ground and we need to dodge shockwave, but we can attack him again repeatedly. Once he's taken enough damage, he will slam the arena in the middle, revealing more acid. And now when he attacks, bees will chase us around and we need to dodge these again before he's in the middle of the floor and we can do some more attack damage on him. After this, capital B slams the corners of the arena, making it even smaller all of us to dodge. And now he drops beehives that send out their own shock waves. Once again, he will continue to slam, and we will continue to dodge. When he's in the ground, we can attack him, ready for even more of the arena to be slammed out. And on the final stage of phase three, he sends out bees, the hives, and also sends out his own shockwaves when he slams into the ground. After careful dodging and manoeuvring, we'll beat this final phase of phase three. We'll move on to the fourth section. The fourth and final phase, capital B flies above the center of the arena, sending bombs out that chase us down. We need to maneuver these so that they hit him instead of hitting us. Once enough of these have been guided into capital B, he starts to send two bombs out and also flies around the arena, making it a little bit harder for us to attack him with his own bombs. Once he's taken enough damage of this phase of phase four, he starts to send out three bombs bombs at a time but after one hit we've won the fight and unlock the last achievement and complete this game please say we've done it achievement lot two achievements unlocked we've got them both you also unlock one of the tonics for defeating the boss finally defeat the boss and then we've unlocked all the tonics as well and I've got to say, I really enjoyed this game. It was a very chill completion for the first in this series. But now we move on to the second game, Ukulele and the Impossible Lair. This one changed up from being a 3D platformer to being a 2D side-scrolling platformer. We still would control the same characters and Capital B makes a dastardly plan to rule over the Royal Stingdom with a hive mind device that allows him to control the bees. The Royal Stingdom ruler, sure. Queen Phoebe, has asked us to help us in rescuing the Royal Bee Italian guards. When we are dropped into this game, we are facing off against Capital B from the start and if you're good enough you can actually beat the game here we're not so we had to play through the game to complete it as intended but if you are good enough you can take on the impossible lair and defeat capital b from the very get-go but as you can imagine the impossible lair is quite hard the steps to complete in this game are pretty much the same as they were in the first game step one play through all the levels and collect five coins and the royal b at the end of each level step two take on the impossible lair and defeat capital b and step three clean up anything missed in the old world and there's a lot so step one each level has quills and coins hidden throughout. In this game, the quills aren't as valuable as they were for the achievement. They are used for purchasing tonics which are power-ups, or they can have a different filter on the game to make it look different. Equipping the first tonic unlocks this achievement. We just play the tonic! And we also get an achievement for finishing a level with either 2, 3 or 4 respectively equipped. Achievement unlock double mixer. The main collectible that we need to find are the coins called Twit Coins, which we need to be careful how we say is this is a kid's game. Finding our first coin gives us this achievement. Achievement unlocked, Twit Coin, hmm, cryptic. We also get more for collecting 10, 25, 50, 100 and 200 Twit Coins. Each level has five coins and they are numbered in order that they can be found in each level. So if you find coin two first, you'll know that the first coin is located somewhere earlier on in that level. The Cost. coins are used to pay for the next section in the overworld <laughs> by going to Trouser and asking him to lower the paywall. Lowering the first one gives us this achievement. Oh, what for just done? Achievement unlocked. After each other paywall, yeah, we also get these achievements. Way achievement unlocked. The main aim of this game is to complete every single level rescuing the bees. And the bees are then used as a shield when you take on the impossible lair and the achievements in this game are mainly attached to collecting all of the bees for every two bees that you do collect you will unlock another achievement achievement unlocked oh we have 12 
all the way up until we've collected every single one of all 48 of the bees. Achievement unlocked, army of 48. In this game, you don't unlock any skills later on. So you don't need to backtrack through the levels once you've unlocked more skills. Everything can be found and collected in one playthrough of the game. So with that, we carried on playing and unlocking all the levels until we cross something in the overworld which changes the levels, meaning that each level has two different there variations of it. And in each variation, there's another five coins to collect. If we do get hit in a level, then Layla leaves us and we can bump into them to collect them again before they disappear and we can take another hit. On our playthrough, once we played through all the levels and rescued each bee from them, we had around 42 of the 48 that we can collect when we moved on to the second step. So step two, take on the impossible lair and capital B. As it is unlocked at the very beginning of this game and we attempted it to begin with at the first playthrough, we weren't as prepared as we are now. Although it is still extremely difficult. With all the bees that we've rescued, they do help to form a shield around us so we can take an extra hit. Meaning that with the 42 that we have collected, we could take an extra 42 yep. hits. Which sounds like a lot, but the impossible yep. layer is massive and has a lot of difficult platforming sections and many obstacles that will do damage. Not only this, but we have to take on capital B in different sections throughout the impossible layer. And each section that we do face off against capital B, he learns more tricks and attacks well, from kills and take more of our health or B shield off us. Once we get onto the final stage of the capital B fight and we've done enough damage, he drops the hive mind for us to collect and we can start damaging him until we've beaten the boss. Have we done it? However, this isn't the end of the game, and now we have two minutes to escape his tower. And then we will have completed the game and unlocked this achievement. Way achievement one, lock time one. And we can move on to the final step of the game. Step three, clean up all of the collectibles in the overworld. We've got a few things here that we need to collect, whether it be the remaining bees in the overworld, well, some of them need to find secret exits in levels, but the main thing that we need to collect is all the hidden tonic. We do get help from these signs that give us a clue to where the tonic is located nearest to them. That's enough. Outside this cape, a particular breed of vein that sprouts flowers. Buddy slam the softened ground below. Most of them just require either a bit of platforming or a little bit of puzzle solving to find. And all in all, it's just a bit of a grind. And once we've found all of the hidden tonics, we get this achievement. Da -da -da. Achievement unlocked. Tonic mania. But we haven't finished there. Remember when I said that the quills weren't that important in this game? Well, they're not in relation to getting achievements for collecting a certain amount of quills. However, you do use the quills to purchase all of the tonics. And at this point, we had to replay the level with as many multipliers to quills as we could. Meaning that we had to play the first level around 15 times with this multiplier on to collect enough quills so we can purchase every single one of the tonics. So, with that, we should be able to buy how many coins we've got the quills we've got 2136 quills so buy that one and then if we buy this last one the achievements should be ours boom and boom ukulele one and two fully completed so my final thoughts on this game all in all both games are really chilled and a quite pleasant way to collect another completion and add it to the ever-growing list of games we've completed i think i prefer the second game as a 2d platform it was easy to pick up a master and the quirk of the final boss being available to take on at the very beginning of the game i think was really cool if you're a noob like me you needed to play the game just to make it a little bit easier with the hardest part just having to locate everything but if you're wanting to take on this challenge i'd recommend using a guide so you're not spending hours searching through every single level just to find something that's really well hidden thank you for stopping by and if you enjoyed the video please leave a thank like you. or consider subscribing for the next game that we complete if you have any game suggestions you can leave them in the comment section below to be added to the list or you can catch me live over on twitch at the smiley and thank you all for watching and i'll catch you in the next one